Hello, so in this video, I'm sharing some clinical pearls that I pulled from day two of the first annual um, Los Angeles Reconstructive and Plastic Surgery Symposium held at Cedar sinai So I am a lymphedema therapist and board certified massage therapist. I help people after their breast implant and explant surgeries. Um, and this is for my fellow uh, lymphatic massage therapists who are helping similar clients, especially if they are coming after breast reconstruction and oncology massage clients helping people um, who are breast cancer survivors. So this will kind of give us um, some insight into what the plastic surgeons are having, are talking to each other about in the conference. Um, so we kind of are familiar with what potentially our clients are gonna tell us that their surgeon is telling them um, in the future as we help clients. Um, so the first thing is um, some different types of surgery that I didn't know would necessarily be grouped together, but are being talked about and done um, in reconstructive plastic surgery. So the first one is if a uh, BRCA positive patient has large breasts and she wants to have that prophylactic mastectomy, they have found that if you actually have two surgeries, you may get a better cosmetic result. So what they are doing is first they will give that BRCA positive patient who wants a prophylactic mastectomy, they'll give the breast lift first and then they'll do the mastectomy afterwards. Um, and they find that it gives a better result. So if we have a client that comes and said, I, I got, you know, I got uh, a tested, I'm BRCA positive, and I want to have surgery, that may be an option that she is offered. And the other kind of um, two-stage surgery option that I heard about on day two was a staged wise. And then again, this is a, a client that has larger breasts, that has more breast tissue. Um, and the problem is if you do a surgery, a reconstruction surgery, um, there is always a risk of implant complications in this T junction that they will do. Um, so what some surgeons are doing is doing like a stage wise pattern where first they are doing a vertical um, and then they're they're giving making less tissue in this direction, and then in a later surgery they're doing a horizontal scar, and then taking some tissue away in this direction, to make the breast smaller, but not like try to make it smaller all at once, in which you might get um, some wound complication problems. So the important thing to know there is the surgeon specifically said, you know what, it takes some hand holding because intermediate between the first surgery and the second surgery, they have like a reconstruction and then they'll have extra tissue down here, down below and around um, that IMF. And they need to understand that this is not their final result. It's, of course, it doesn't look cosmetically fantastic, um, but they're going to have a subsequent surgery. And the surgeons were saying, you know what, in so many cases, I'm doing more than one surgery anyways. I want to get the chance to get back in. And if there's any problems, anything I want to improve on, um, I'm going to take that client, that patient back to the operating room anyways. What if I just do these stage, these two different stages of the surgery to get a better cosmetic result and hopefully reduce the incidence of wound complications? So that's another one. If a client is saying, hey, I, I'm getting breast reconstruction, but this is how um, the surgeon is planning. Have you ever heard of that? Now we've heard of it because we heard it at a conference. Um, so some other things that they were talking about, they were talking about the BMI issues with wound complications and BMI. And one surgeon said, you know what, he's found um, if, the, if the client, if the patient has a BMI of over 45, any BMI over 45, the incidence of complications, wound complications, complications of the surgery exponentially increases. So there was conversation about Ozempic as they're doing um, that, that patients are taking Ozempic before their breast surgery to reduce BMI and therefore reduce complications. Um, also important to know if a patient has previous abdominal surgery um, that often ends up with increased wound healing and uh, complications 
after their cancer surgery, after their cancer reconstructive surgery, if they're using the abdomen for a flap. Um, so it's important to know that, that they may be at, at re increased risk of having complications um, in the abdominal area if they've had previous abdominal surgery. And I think I remember one of the surgeons said, you know what, it's like the flap itself when they're trying to uh, like raise the flap and, and um, create the flap, they can see um, how it may be like potential to be a less healthy flap then. Um, and then if the flap, uh, if they're doing a flap surgery after prior liposuction, sometimes they're finding venous issues um, with the flap, again, as they're actually trying to create it and do it in the OR during that operation. Um, and then they talked about breast implants, a different placement of breast implants. One surgeon said, you know what, from, from uh, patient feedback, that subpectoral, putting the implant underneath the pectoralis major muscle, looks better in photos, but as far as his patients, um, if they have a dual plane approach or a pre-pectoral approach, those patients will tell him it, like the livability, the ability to live their life, do their activities of daily living, feel comfortable is um, improved with if they have that pre-pectoral. And we need to know that over the last 10 years, um, over the last decade, there has been a change as there will always be a change, but there's a change in how they were doing um, breast surgeries and breast reconstructions and where they were placing the breast implants 10 years ago versus what they're doing now in 2024. Um, and surgeons also mentioned that the plane that they're able to go in is determined by the mastectomy skin and the mastectomy operation itself. So um, it's, it's not, something that uh, the patient can really have her heart set on, um, that this is, you know, her previous decision as soon as she got her biopsy, she knows exactly which plane she wants it in. The surgeon really has to assess um, what the tissue looks like after the mastectomy operation um, itself. Um, so that was just uh, some little tips and tidbits that I pulled from the second day of the Los Angeles uh, Symposium on Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery at Cedar sinai I hope that this um, little recap helped you and kind of gave you some ideas of what plastic surgeons are having conversation with one another um, at medical conferences. Thanks and have a great day.